So today we'll be talking about measuring the aerodynamic forces for the flow around automobiles. So as an example here, I have a model of a Scion FRS. And let's say we want to experimentally measure the drag force or the lift or down force um, for this automobile. And let's say we also want to make some modifications. So I have a 3D printed uh, wing profile here. Let's say we want to add that um, to the back of the car as a rear wing. How does that change um, the downforce? How does that change the drag? And to do this, you know, we can do it in CFD or we can do it experimentally. So today I'm in the lab. Uh, we have a large water channel for measuring um, the, the flow about different objects. And so today I'll be talking about uh, constructing a force balance to measure the forces on automobiles. So I have all the components of the force system. Um, the system was designed by myself and constructed by myself. Um, so what we have here is two load cells in series. So the first load cell uh, measures the drag, so that's this force. The second load cell is connected to the first load cell but is perpendicular and this measures the lift or down force. Uh, the model is connected to the bottom here and so I'll show you an example. Um, this is a simplified version of an automobile. It's a bluff body. It's a standardized geometry studied in the literature. And so we'll, do, we'll be doing this one first. And so this is attached to the load cells um, by that brass connection there. And then any force is applied on the structure, whether it be drag or lift or down force, um, will be measured by these uh, Futec load cells. Um, once we finish the more the, you know, the basic geometries, we'll be moving on to the more complicated automobile geometries with an example shown here. <clears throat> so the setup is <clears throat> fairly simple. Uh, as I said, we have <clears throat> the two load cells and we need to have uh, amplifiers to amplify the signal uh, of those load cells. So this is a custom board with the two amplifiers for the two load cells. Um, and then everything's hooked up uh, to the computer, the measurement computer here, and to a power supply. So once we have everything hooked up, we're able to measure the changes in forces from these load cells right on the computer. Uh, the one tricky thing here is that because the aerodynamic forces are very, fairly small for this geometry, um, I need to go with fairly um, sensitive uh, load cells. Um, to be able to measure those changes. Now the problem with that is that this model and the mounting apparatus has a weight to it. Um, it's fairly significant. I can actually measure it here. So but it's 579 grams. Um, that's almost, you know, half of the limit or even more than half the limit of these load cells. So I don't want to overload these load cells and I want to be able to measure the changes with the forces. So thankfully we're doing this in water. Like I said, this is a water channel. And um, we have something called a buoyancy force. Because this model is hollow, um, when we put it in the water it will float because it's made of plastic. And so what we can do is we can balance the buoyancy force, which is moving the force upward, and the gravity force, which is downward, to create a neutrally buoyant, or zero net force situation. And that way we have no load on these load cells initially. So we're only measuring the changes when we run the channel and when we have the aerodynamic forces. So I'll be talking about that today. I have a little aquarium to calibrate these sensors. What I'll be doing is filling up this hollow uh, model with different amounts of water until everything can all the forces cancel out and we have a neutrally buoyant situation. And then I can show you uh, measuring some drag and lift forces. So let's go ahead and do that now. So this is the force balance setup on the end plate. As you can see, we have the force balance mounted underneath. Um, the end plate's actually upside down right now because we're building the center um, channel here. Um, we want to shield this plate mounted to the model um, from any ir erroneous forces from the flow. So we have a shroud that's going to be going around and at the end we're going to have a piece here connecting everything up, buttoning everything up so the flow goes around and doesn't touch 
um, the mounting plate mounted to the force balance. And then these four pins go through the end plate, which sits on top here, uh, to the model. So we're getting it all set up right now. Let's see how she looks when she's ready to go. So finishing up the force balance, as you can see the <coughs> model is installed and pins are floating in holes so you can see the model is able to move around. We have the shroud um, covering up the apparatus that holds the model so we don't have any extra force, extra drag, then that only measured by the model. And the force balance itself is mounted on top of the plate away from the water. So everything is ready to go. We're going to put it in the channel and see what happens. So testing the Ahmed body uh, 25 degrees slant back. Uh, as you can see this, the flow is at zero uh, meters per second right now. This channel is off and there is a angle to the model that's nose down. Um, this is imposed manually so that when we run the channel um, because the model is pushed back by the force it levels itself. Um, if we didn't have this self-imposed angle, it would actually go nose up. And so what we're going to do is we're going to run the channel at different speeds here. 